Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Hope that you're doing great today wherever you are. It's a beautiful hot summer day here today, but wherever you're listening to this from and whatever your weather, I know our sisters down in Australia are in the middle of winter, but whatever you're doing, hope it's a good day for you that you're doing great and feeling positive and um, you know, just good about your life. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate your company and also the way that you talk to each other. You know, we're Sisters Over 60 here on a journey uh, to make the most out of life in our 60s. And uh, we're just here really to support one another, hold each other up, hold hands. (laughs) So um, I'm drinking my cup of tea this morning. Now, I've got a very unusual tea. I've showed it to you before, but I just thought I'd try it again. And um, it's unique because it is uh, made out of uh, mulberry. Uh, leaves and uh, something called butterfly bluten. It's a tree. It's a butterfly bluten. I checked it out. It's a tree and it grows in, in Thailand, in Asia. And the unique thing about this tea, which I actually purchased in Vienna, is that it's the color blue. And I'm going to show it to you in my nice clear glass. Now, I don't know whether you can see that. I'll hold it up. Well, I can see it blue, but it may look a little black to you, but it's a kind of a turquoisey blue <laughs> and it's really, really good. It's a fruit tea. It's it's lovely and it's apparently very good for you, Mulberry. So all of Mother Nature's uh, herbs and spices and flowers tend to have something to offer. So I do want to thank our sponsor for today's show. Very important. It's Puritan's Pride. Now, we obviously care a lot about well-being in 60 and Me. This is one of our big priorities to stay healthy and well in your 60s. And you can check out the website Puritan's Pride and find out how the right nutrition can contribute to a healthy lifestyle. So thanks to Puritan's Pride. Thank you. Now, um, we've got a story today I want to share with you. Maybe it's going to take you back a few years, and that's probably a good thing sometimes, to have a little nostalgia in our lives. And it's um, a, a chat based on an article by one of our bloggers, Michelle Vosberg. Now, Michelle um, reminds us about the things that we used to do as a child and asks the question, what are some things that you have probably not done since you were a child, but maybe you should again? So we'll go down nostalgia lane here for a bit. And uh, some of these were so sweet. I just, um, they're very simple, some of them, because that's what happens when you're a child. (laughs) You're not sort of thinking about complexity too much. You're just looking to do things that are new and interesting and uh, give you some sense of um, exploration and discovery. So do you remember playing as a child just because, (laughs) just because you were a kid? I think that there's some things here that she she talks about that really brought back memories. The first one was eating a popsicle. Now, do you remember when popsicles were like in two halves and you had you could break them in half or you could just eat them like to all you could do it yourself? <laughs> but she remembers, you know, splitting the popsicle with her sister and I never when I read that I had I did remember but then I completely had forgotten it. So, eating a popsicle. Now, you may not be able to find those double-sided popsicles anymore, but you'll definitely find something that's like a popsicle. You could make one, of course, but there's something fun about just going out and buying one and sitting on a bench somewhere and eating a popsicle. Just in a nice sunny day, that might be a great uh, treat. Another thing is to make a handmade card. Okay, now we talk about simplification and downsizing, and I know I know that I spent quite a few months of my life sorting out all the handmade cards that my kids had given me and taking pictures of them and um, letting some of them go. But she says, of course, you know, there's there's something about just giving a handmade card these days that's it's not normal anymore. <laughs> My brother recently sent me a handmade, um, handwritten letter. And then he said, "How? when was the last time you got a handwritten uh, card? And it was true. Years. Do- I mean, well, almost approaching decades, probably. But anyway, so you, one thing you, you made as a, as a kid were little handmade cards for your parents for Mother's Day or just for just because you couldn't find the right card. <laughs> so you made it yourself. And when you give it to someone that loves you and you love them, it just makes things a little special. So make, a handmade card is a kind of a nice gift to give and something you haven't done since you were a kid, probably. Another thing is to um, spend the whole day reading. 
I used to do this. I used to read almost from the time I got up to the time I went to sleep and sometimes more than one book. I would like finish one book and then I would reach out for the next one. Sitting under a tree when I went to college in Boulder, I can remember that sitting under the tree in uh, Ebon G. Fine Park, <laughs> for those of you who are in, Bo in Boulder, and uh, just sitting there with a book for hours. And when was the last time you did that? Not many of us do it. I, I certainly don't do it anymore. And maybe this is some inspiration to, to find a good book or two and uh, go and do that. But, you know, we have work, chores, obligations, responsibilities. <laughs> and reading is like uh, getting pushed a little bit down on the priority list. So I think it's important to just think about it. If not now, says Michelle, when? One thing that she suggested that we haven't probably done in years is have a tea party. Remember when you were a kid? Oh my goodness, you used to line up all your teddy bears and your little animals and uh, sometimes your squiggling kittens and cats and dress them up and <laughs> make them part of your tea party. Or you drag your mom and dad or your friends into this tea party and just sit and have a little ritual of making the tea, serving the tea, pretending you were grown up. <laughs> now we're grown up. We don't pretend we're kids anymore. So maybe that's something to do. Have a tea party. She says, Michelle says her, her grandmother used to have real tea parties and used to invite the grandkids over and um, maybe give them a little gift or some incentive. But it was just having everyone over for tea with the proper china and maybe a little biscuit or something special and um, having a tea party. OK, this is one. Collecting rocks. Kids do love rocks. I must admit, I want to take my little son, grandson out for um, uh, walks. He always picks up rocks and I have to continually take them out of his hands because I'm afraid he's going to eat them. He's only little. He's only one. But, um, you know, rocks just seem to fascinate kids and they pick them up, put them in their pockets so they're kind of loaded down with uh, with rocks and bring them home. And it's just that kind of uh, joy of having rocks in your pocket. Then you paint them or you do something funky with them. But you can do that today. I do it and I haven't got any just to hand, but you've seen my rocks before. I, I gather rocks from the beach, especially white ones, if you can get really nice white rocks and, um, and, and paint them. Rainbow colors, put little quotes on them, give them to someone as a gift or just leave them somewhere. It's a big movement around the world about rock, leaving rocks with inspirational <clears throat> messages now. <clears throat> it's one thing to do with rocks, but just paint them or just hold them connecting with mother nature. So that's another thing that Michelle says we haven't done probably as a kid. Sit outside and watch fireflies. Well, I haven't actually found fireflies in a long time, but just sitting outside, just watching nature. Uh, it reminds us to slow down, you know, to be calm. The nature is very uh, soothing. It's good for your blood pressure. <laughs> it's just good for you. But to watch nature at work, is just quite spectacular. I make a fairy garden is another thing that Michelle's done. She said she bought a house with a shed and in this little shed, she's kind of turned it into a fairy garden or fairy house with a little garden and the grandkids and friends come over and you actually can go in there and just sit and read, she says, and it's just like a little house, like a tiny house, but it's a very, very tiny house. <laughs> you could probably put a chair and a, and a table in there, but it's a sweet little, um, her picture was, was sweet, a little uh, house that um, makes you feel like you're a child again, miniature size. And just it's kind of at either maybe end of the garden. Maybe it's just a room in your house, a little place that's your fairy garden where fantasy, imagination and dreams can come true. Another thing that she suggests is to make a collage. I do remember that doing this as a child. I really I still do. I, I, still, I was just going to reach out and look for something, but I, I, I make collages myself and I take magazines and find mostly just abstract colors and shapes and piece them together. It's kind of like my painting. And uh, this is something that we do as a kid often. Just um, And as we get into teenage years, I know it became, became quite a trend to do a vision board, you know, get all those magazines of fashion and style and houses and things and create the world that you envisage for yourself in the future. And uh, anyway, collecting pictures of words that you think are going to happen in your future and then hide them and then five years later, bring them out <laughs> and see how much it matches. But collages, vision boards, that's all something that you've done as a kid probably and you haven't done it recently. Okay, there's a few more. One is to eat junk, eat junk at the baseball game. 
Well, I, I don't go to baseball games very often. I never actually did. But eating a little junk food now and again, we have these affairs sometimes in our town and they make sausages and all these weird things. I don't even eat meat very often, but it's like, OK, they've made something unusual. I'll try it like my tea, like my blue tea. I'll just have a go at something a little odd. And so, you know, cotton candy, you know, chocolate bar that you haven't had in a while. Just some quotes, junk food, junk food that make you feel like you're a kid again. When you didn't worry about calories, you didn't worry about sugar, just for a minute, just let it go. And then another thing is to play in the sand. I really love the sand. I love beaches. I think I should go and spend some summer time by the beach. Is there something about it? My son, my other son in Scotland um, has, um, he lives in a place that's, very, well, it's not very close. It's a half an hour walk, but you walk through the dunes and it's really, really pretty. And you get to the sea and there it is, just a magnificent sandy beach. And you can walk on the sand, have it squidge through your toes and then look out to the ocean, which just goes for miles and miles. It's really hypnotically beautiful. So playing in the sand is one thing. And write a message on the sand, send it to your Facebook friends and then rub it out with the water. <laughs> I did that once when I was in Brazil. I remember doing a big heart with I love you and um, just sent it to my friends on Facebook from the beach. It was sweet. You know, I think those are some things that uh, really, really are inspirational. Um, you know, feel like a kid again. Just go for it. See what, see what happens when you do those things, indulge in your childhood again. And in some ways, I think actually older women just naturally slip back into that. I just talked about bubbles the other day to about my son, my grandson, and I love doing bubbles, always have, but I just decided now I carry them with me in my purse and little, a little one, I, in fact, I've got it right here, I can show you again. It's this little one that's like for weddings, just got a tiny bit of, um, you know, stuff in it, soapy water <laughs> and do my, my bubbles. But anyway, wherever you are, whatever season you are, just today, have fun, relax, do something that you haven't done for a long time. Go back and be a kid for a day or an hour and uh, tell us how you feel. What childish passion have you indulged in recently? I'd love to know. And if you haven't done one, do one today and then tell us about it. What childlike or childish pleasure have you indulged in recently? Okay, everybody. Well, I do hope this has been inspirational. I'm so expired and I'm going to go, I don't know what I'm going to do, blow bubbles or go and read for a few hours and just relax. Hope you do too. And uh, take very good care wherever you are in the world. Thank you for being here. Tell a friend about 60 and Me. And I do look forward to seeing you all again really, really soon. Take good care. Bye-bye for now.